אוקיי. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Dentlinks. My name is uh, Peter Tawil, and it's my pleasure to present to you this afternoon uh, Dr. Nadim Abu Jaude, that you all know. Uh, and uh, the topic for tonight will be from composite to ceramic and aesthetic journey. And basically, part two of the presentation that was given back in July, a couple of months earlier. Uh, Dr. Nadim. Uh, graduated from St. George University in Beirut and pursued his studies in dental materials in Paris University. He's a prosthodontist from the Lebanese University, a senior lecturer at the uh, Lebanese University and clinical associate at the American University uh, of Beirut. He's a pioneer in implant prosthodontics in the Middle East and uh, an international lecturer and has many publication at his account. He's currently, uh, he's recently been nominated the president of the International College of Dentists in Middle East section and has contributed along with uh, Professor Barakat and uh, Dr. Roy Sabri in the book of John Boomer, uh, Fundamentals of Implant Dentistry Prosthetics Principles. It's a quintessence publication. Uh, tonight, uh, it's a pleasure to have you, Dr. Nadim, with us and uh, we'll be addressing uh, or continuing the topic that we have started a couple of months earlier. Please, the floor is all yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be with you again. We'll be continuing uh, the uh, journey of aesthetics uh, from composite to ceramic. With, uh, we are now at the level of the ceramic part. The advantages of the composite, just to uh, summarize what was uh, uh, said in the earlier uh, uh, webinar, advantages of uh, composite, it's, we can get an immediate result. It's a non-invasive technique. It's easy to repair and change. The problem is that we are going to have an aging, a discoloration, and soft tissue reaction because soft tissue does not uh, react well to uh, resin composites. Porosities of the composite while we're doing it or uh, intrinsic to its uh, um, uh, properties can create uh, aesthetic problems. And the layering, if the layering is not properly done, you can have some discoloration on the layers that were uh, used. While we, when we talk about ceramics, what were the advantages of this uh, composite will be the disadvantages and what were the advantages will be the disadvantages, meaning that the disadvantages is a def deferred result. So you cannot just take it in one session. It is invasive. No matter what we say, no matter what we do, we'll always have to work somehow on the enamel and on the tools, it's not easy to repair or change. The advantages are on the aging. The aging, uh, uh, it ages much easier, much better than the uh, composite. The color does not change. It's a stable color. Soft tissue reaction, the soft tissue accepts much better the uh, ceramic than the, uh, the resin, cement, resin, composites. The porosities we don't have. Layering, we don't have. So, why do we need it? Why do we need to do some ceramics? We need them to, to use, uh, to clear out stained teeth, dark teeth, hypocalcifications, multiple diastemas, peg laterals, chip teeth, lingual positioning of the teeth. But please don't use veneers and uh, ceramics to correct malpositioned teeth. Send them to orthodontics, it's much easier, much safer. Contraindication, insufficient tooth substrate. If we're using the uh, veneers, enamel is the, the, your, your partner. If you don't have enough enamel, you're going to have problems. Labial version of the teeth will have to, to um, cut a lot of the tooth and thus 
compromising to tooth. Extensive interdental spacing also needs to have uh, orthodontic treatment or different approach. Poor oral hygiene or decays caries is a situation where ceramic is not the best uh, solution. You have to train your patient, educate your patient before doing any kind of this treatment. Parafunctional habits, clenching and bruxism is a, com a problem to ceramic because uh, ceramic is brittle and it might uh, break. Uh, if you're thinking about the full zirconia crowns, we're going to discuss it uh, maybe along the uh, presentation. Uh, moderate to severe malposition or crowding also is a uh, contraindication. Send this treatment to the orthodontist instead of doing instant orthodontics with uh, veneers and crowns. I'm going to catch up on a case that was presented uh, last time. How we can treat a case like this and to bring it, uh, bring her from the picture above to the uh, uh, picture on the uh, on the lower of the screen is with the uh, uh, help of the orthodontist to create the pro uh, projection. Can we do veneers for these cases? Definitely not. No matter what you do, a veneer or a full crown, the process is irreversible. The veneers are mostly costly and composite resin bonding also, uh, uh, also is not the solution in these cases. Veneers are usually not repairable and should, be, should they chip or crack. Because enamel has been removed, your tooth may become more sensitive to hot and cold food and beverages, compromising the uh, health of the uh, pulp and ev leading eventually, in some cases, to uh, necrotic pulp. Veneers may not exactly match the color of your teeth or the other teeth, adjacent teeth. Also, the veneer's color cannot be altered once it's placed. We cannot just change it. If you plan on whitening your teeth, you need to do it before doing any ceramic or any crowns or any veneers. Once you have the uh, veneers placed, you're not allowed to bite your nails, chew your pencils, a buzzer, or other hard objects, or put extensive pressure on your teeth. Teeth with veneers can still decay because you still have the margins outside and the margins can decay. Veneers are not good choice to unhealthy teeth. Weaken teeth, or if an uh, inadequate amount of enamel exists on the tooth surface, we need to have enamel. Your partner is the enamel. Clenching and grinding can cause the veneers to crack, to chip, and to debound. So, we're going to talk about the ceramic veneers. We have three types of ceramic veneers it could be the facial window, where you just uh, layer the veneer on the surface of the enamel removing a slight uh, uh, quantity of enamel. It could be the incisor wrap. The incisor wrap will be go below, beyond the incisor edge and we have a reverse uh, curve on the palatal side of the tooth. And this we are not using much any, uh, uh, anymore as much as before. Incisor shoulder, this is what we are using most commonly where we stop at the edge of the uh, incisal at, at the incisal edge and we cover the full incisal edge so but before doing any kind of these preparations the question would be to prep or not to prep are we going to prep the tooth to place a veneer or are we not going to prep the tooth is it going to be a prepless to, uh, tooth it will depend on the insertion path if you have a, a, a a path of insertion that is obstructed by any convexity of the tooth, it has to be reduced, then you have to prep. Limited correction of the position of the tooth, definitely if you need to do so, so you need to have a limited correction of the position of the tooth, not much because you need to still be in the enamel. You need to manage the size. If you're going to prep or not, it will depend if you're going to keep the size of the tooth or you're going to um, extend the size of the tooth. Color correction, finish line, you'll definitely need to have a finish line for the lab to have a good job and to know where it's in. Keeping or reducing the size of the tooth. Do we need to add volume or uh, augment the tooth? Two techniques, two different approaches. If we're keeping the tooth uh, uh, or reducing the size of the tooth, 
definitely we need to prepare. We need to remove a certain amount of enamel to be able to replace it with the same amount of ceramic or less. But if we're adding a volume, the preparation should not be as extensive, but we'll have a better preservation of the enamel. Look at this case. This is a patient who had, after orthodontic treatment, a recurrent repositioning of the lateral to a pal more palatal and more apical position. Twice it was corrected orthodontically. When the, the, the uh, retainer palatally will debone, she will, uh, the laterals will jump back to, into palatal and more apical position. For this patient, we, are, we need to augment the volume of the tooth. So it will be definitely a prep plus tooth. As you can see, this is the bite that she has. We need to secure a better overlap, uh, not to have a uh, lateral sliding into a class 3. For that, we look closely at the tooth. It's a tooth that has uh, full enamel. It has a nice translucency. We can just prepare a veneer, prepless veneer for this case, and put the tooth into a proper position with a slight overlap to secure the uh, occlusion. On the other side, it would be done, done the same. As you can see, it's a very limited uh, marginal uh, preparation where to give the patient, uh, the lab technician, a uh, line to stop uh, uh, on. And accordingly, a veneer is prepared. And this veneer is cemented in the mouth, is bonded in the mouth, and the occlusion has been secured, as you can see on the upper right side of the screen. Matching the color of the veneers is difficult in these situations because it will be one tooth in between adjacent teeth. Nevertheless, your close cooperation with the lab should give you a good result. And you can see the aging from 2013 to 2017 on this slide. You can see the aging, the nice aging of the uh, veneers on this case. And this is the happy smile of the patient. In another situation where lip filling, as I consider it if not properly done, is a smile killer, brought this patient to us. It's true that these lips are uh, very full and nice and static, but in dynamic, you can see that the upper teeth are not showing. This patient is in her mid-twenties. Um, basically, when we have a, a class 2 division shoe, a two in, as in this case, the uh, lip filler is not indicated or should be indicated with caution because the lower lip will have the shape that you're seeing on the screen. It will unfold uh, buckly and you can see the on the right side of the screen uh, the line of the inner part of the lip uh, is showing as you can see here this belongs to the wet area and it's not supposed to show also we're showing the lower teeth and the upper, uh, uh, main actors in the smile are the upper teeth are not showing as you can see, this is her occlusion. She has a nice occlusion, a good occlusion. But unfortunately, she has a reverse upper curve of the incisors. When approached for orthodontic treatment, she refused. And uh, she systematically refused. But analyzing the situation, even if we do orthodontic treatment, we'll have to end up doing some uh, veneers layering because of the size of the teeth and uh, the laterals are too small and the centrals are uh, r relatively too small also we needed to add some uh, width to the uh, teeth for that it was decided to do a, almost a prepress veneer prepress veneers for this case to align this so are we changing the, the size of the teeth yes we are changing we are augmenting the size of the teeth for that we don't need to prep we don't need to prep much we only need to do some insertion pass uh, preparation. Before doing anything, a mock uh, build-up with composite was used. As you can see, the curve is much closer to a proper curve, and it's showing much more in her smile. When we, uh, when the patient accepted the the projected smile that we were going to give her we went into the preparation. As you see, almost prepless veneers. 
just a minor line, finish line on the proximal area, on the marginal area. At this situation, on the uh, uh, left center of the patient, the margin was sub uh, supragingival in the enamel, not to go into the dentine. Only four teeth were prepared, polished, prepared, and the veneers were given to this patient. And it was, uh, sorry, six teeth, the six teeth from K9 to K9. The size of the teeth were augmented. The patient has been advised to use also the, uh, to cover the first premolars, but she had refused. That's why you can see the extended size of the canines distally more uh, than it should have done. But the, the, for the patient, this is the frontal view that we could do. We could not have longer incisors because if the longer incisor will impeach on the lower lip and the phonetics of the V and the F will, have, uh, will be compromised. For that, that was the maximum of uh, length that we could obtain with the, uh, this build-up technique. As you can see, the transformation of the smile of the patient from your uh, left side to the right side. When we talk about veneers, veneers cannot easily cover uh, a, 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 a discolored teeth. When you have teeth with root canal, and this is the teeth of a colleague dentist, she refused to have crowns on her teeth, and she had orthodontic treatment. Are we keeping the size of the teeth? Yes, we are. Are we going to prepare? We will definitely prepare if we're going to keep the tooth in, this pos in their position. When was, uh, what was advisable in this situation? Knowing that this tooth, if we're going to prepare, uh, keep the size, we're going to uh, prepare the tooth. If we're going to prepare the tooth, we're going to remove the enamel. And removing an enamel on the tooth that has been anodontically uh, treated and bleach, as you can see on the palatal side of the lateral incisor and the canine cavity is immense for the breaching, um, would compromise the uh, stability of the tooth or the resistance of the teeth. For that, what we propose for this patient, knowing that every time you cut on a dark tooth, the, the, the deeper you go, the darker the tooth is. The dentine is the dark part. The enamel is the clearer part. So it's more advisable not to touch the enamel and don't get as close as possible to the dentine. Keep the enamel safe in these situations. For that, upon her uh, insistence, we advised her to do some orthodontic treatment by bringing the two uh, teeth, the central and the, uh, the lateral and the canine, more palatally. It will interfere with the palatal occlusion, with the, uh, with the occlusion palatally. Palatally is the composite. We can reduce the composite. Instead of cutting the enamel on the buckle, we can reduce the composite from the palatal and bring the teeth more palatal. As you can see, clearing the contact points will be able, will make us, give us the, the possibility to bring the teeth palatally with a uh, simple orthodontic appliance that was removable appliance and a margin line was created just for a finish line for the prostodont for the lab technician you see the teeth are more palatal and we have created the space for the veneers without touching the enamel just a finish line for the uh, ceramist to finish his uh, preparation here is the difficulty or in the lab as you can see, this is the finish line. We have kept the size of the tools. We have created enough space to keep the size of the tools. But the color matching of the, of the veneers is the most, most difficult situation in this case. And in this case, we had to do five setups to get to a, as close as possible uh, uh, veneers that we could get. It's not a perfect match, but we'll never be able to get to a perfect match. As you can see, we can also apply it to different situations where the center incisor, uh, the number 11, was brought back slightly, composite was removed, and then uh, ceramic was placed, a ceramic veneer was placed and restored without practically touching the enamel. If you lose the enamel, you lose all the retention that is possible on the uh, ceramic veneer. The situation of this patient who was complaining about her smile, 
with a long face, with a open bite. This is not a situation where we have a lot of stress on the ceramic. But as you can see, hygiene was to be re-evaluated and uh, re-approached. Once the patient was uh, properly uh, uh, um, cooperative with the hygiene, and she had refused to do any surgical and orthodontic treatment like a Lofort one or a, a double jaw surgery, we tried a setup with the composites and this patient was very happy with what she got. This was just an idea to give her uh, what we can do with the composite. But as you can see, by adding on the surface of the teeth, we have augmented the size of the teeth. But this is too much because it was done on direct in the mouth of the patient. But just to give her an idea that lip at rest, we can gain that much. Lip at smile, as you can see, we can change her smile and her self-confidence. Once we uh, agreed upon the treatment, the preparation for this patient was to remove all interferences, decays, composites, because we'd like to start set uh, our uh, margins on pure enamel and not on composite or decayed uh, restorations. For that, it was prepared. And this was, as you can see, the preparations. We have uh, six anterior veneers and some veneers on the premolars, partial veneers on the premolars, and the canine was full coverage, as you can see. This is the final result. In this situation, there is no occlusion, there is no force like, uh, to be exerted on the, on the veneers. We could have some dentine bonding in, in these situations. This is the change that we received, not much on the facial change, but on self-confidence and smile, this is the patient that is more self-confident. But what happens on the long term? If we have a veneer that is placed on the long term, what happens? Veneers, it's true that are very successful for a long time, but in some situations we have complications. We have to understand that the tooth, when it is, subject, uh, it is veneered, it is subjected to a bonding. The bonding is in uh, red, and the veneer is bonded to the tooth. And your partner is the enamel. If you don't have more than 60% of enamel, you cannot do a veneer. And the most interesting part of enamel should be at the cervical area. Ceramic can bond to, uh, uh, to the tooth and to the composite. But when it is subjected to the occlusion, the tooth is not stable, it's not rigid. It's not that rigid as you think. The tooth will flex, and the flexing point is always at the cervical area. And that's why some of these uh, erosions that we, ex uh, we um, experience with uh, clenching people are due to the uh, heavy bite and the flexing of the teeth. When it flexes, the, the contact between the ceramic and the tooth will be subjected, I mean the bonding between the ceramic and the tooth will be subjected to a lot of uh, shear stress, and this shear stress is drastical for the bonding of the ceramic. Pascal Mann have published that if you remove one-third of the thickness of the enamel, it's just one third of the thickness of the enamel. The flexion of the tooth is multiplied by 10. What can happen if you remove the whole enamel and do a crown? The flexion is more dramatic. For that, as you can see here on this picture, you see the veneers are aging on their cervical area because this is the point of stress. You can see that we lost on the uh, number 23 part of the ceramic, on number 11 crack, on number 13, part of the ceramic on the cervical area, and these teeth are veneered, as you can see. And when I talked about a reverse uh, preparation, reverse uh, curve on the preparation, you do not, you're not supposed to cover the palatal side. You're supposed to be flat, because if you have a, a coverage on the palatal surface, also by the flexion of the flexure of the veneer, you will have fractures on the palatal sides. For that, the preparation should be only a, an incisal preparation and not a reverse curve on the palatal. 
as you can see, different situations, different fractures, different problems of the fractures, and definitely all of them on the cervical area of the veneers. The other issue with the veneers is the uh, weakest part of the, prepare, uh, the, the whole system is the composite that is bonding the, the veneer to the tooth. And it is, as we said, a sponge, discoloration, uh, collection of the bacteria, and all this excess of cement will show with time, and the, two will, the gingiva will avoid this kind of uh, um, material by having some recessions, and it will go away from the margin that is in composite. You see the, the aging of the veneers. You can see here closely the fracture on the canine that was subjected to too much pressure on the cervical area, as I said, because we have less uh, enamel on the cervical area, and this is the point where you have all the stress. And as you can see, the line of cement, the composite cement that is on the uh, uh, lateral incise. Debonding, it will happen. You cannot rely on dentine as it is on this situation. Dentine is not a reliable bond for veneers. You can see also the margins will decay. If the hygiene of the patient is not enough, the margins will decay. There is no enamel on this, on this uh, uh, number 21. That was the reason where the, the, the uh, veneer jumped. And plus that rest uh, composite restoration uh, is bonded to the or uh, uh, the veneer is bonded to the composite restoration. This is something you should not do. Veneers will crack, or layering of the veneers will crack. This is a situation where you can see after uh, 12 years of function, the uh, lower 43 was fractured, and you can see many fractures, of, uh, internal fractures of the veneers in this situation patient insisted of ha uh, having them again. These were not veneers practically, there were uh, three-quarter crowns. You can see they were redone, re-cemented in this situation. Patient is a braxer, is a fracturing the ceramic on the lower uh, uh, 44. It will happen sometimes that it will debond because there is not enough enamel to hold the veneer or the crown again. Whether it is a felspatic uh, veneer or whether it is a um, uh, desilicate crown, uh, like Emacs, I'm going to name it, the bonding is composite bonding. And the composite is weak on the dentine, is not as strong as we would like it to be as in enamel. The contraindications of these veneers is the situations are like this, where really it's not only a facade, Look what, uh, how criminal is this situation where all these veneers are done on teeth that were supposed to be fully crowned, endodontically treated, composite badly uh, uh, managed. This is not the way we'd like to approach these kind of veneers or aesthetic veneers. Again, keeping the colors in the acceptable uh, uh, aesthetically for each patient is something. This pre patient presented and asked me to do the premolar number uh, 15, the same color of these teeth. I told her, Madam, it's not, mm, I don't have the material that has a match, that can match this type of veneers that you have. Anyway, you have a lot of overhang on all the teeth. Actually, I was treated uh, as a dentist that does not know what to do. Uh, <coughs> When approaching situations with uh, this type of aesthetics, it's minor, uh, uh, minor uh, malposition, we could do some composites, some ceramics, and correct the aesthetics. It has to be approached up, uh, properly if it is a full ceramic or a veneer that should be used. I'm going to give you the example of this patient who has been treated for a cleft palate with a complex uh, orthodontic and uh, craniofacial surgery, implants, and uh, bone grafting, and all that. This patient has multiple missing teeth. She has the laterals are missing, canines uh, number 23 is missing, 
first premolar on bo uh, both premolars on one uh, uh, first premolar on uh, on the left side number uh, 24 and on the uh, uh, right also there is a missing premolar no matter what we try to do and to bring this premolar into a, a, a occlusion the premolar would rebound apically when discussed with the orthodontist also the position of the central incisor could not be kept in their proper uh, position this is at the temporary stage after ortho treatment so what to do we try to approach this patient by building up the smile and building up the, uh, the site that is to be built according to an ideal smile you will see the missing parts of the, uh, of the teeth in her uh, we copied this and we gave her this without bonding the, uh, to the uh, enamel because we don't want to compromise the enamel that we have with bonding composite to it we'd like to end up with the um, ceramic uh, veneers a, an eggshell is supposed to be given to her to protect these teeth not to fall when she is functioning and eating and uh, speaking this is the project that was prepared as you can see this project comprises a, a veneer on the canine full crown on the implant on the missing lateral two veneers on the central incisors a crown on the canine with an uh, pontic on the lateral and the veneer on the premolar uh, that is rebounding apically this is the smile of the patient she accepted the smile as you can see on the right side she has a molar she has canine and molar she has missing two premolars this is how she functioned for the time of the preparation and the uh, finalization you can see that there is a minor preparation on the central incisors it's just a finish line that was drawn on the premolar and the canine this is a close-up view of the central incisors you can see the very thin finish line it is not a wrap technique it's only a uh, incisal edge technique where we stop as a butt joint on the incisor edge and proximally we have the finish line a similar uh, small uh, a very very thin finish line and you can see on the distal side we created a thin finish line for the lab to know where to stop same thing on the canine on number 13 and this is the finish line a butt joint on the uh, incisor and this is the molar that was untouched you can see on the premolar side which is on the uh, 25 that was a full occlusion veneer because this tooth was rebounding and going um, uh, apically we needed to give her occlusion impression impression whether you do it analog or digital it's the same it's appropriate to your uh, convenience and how you can work with your lab positioning the crowns and the most difficult was to match these colors because on ceramic on the implants you have an abutment underneath you have a different material it will be a zirconia material based uh, crowns while on the veneers it will be a felspatic or a uh, 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 or, or ceramic, disilicate ceramic it's a different uh, light translucency this is the final work as you can see you can see the on the number 13 it's a veneer the a crown on the uh, number 12 11 21 veneers pontic with a crown on the uh, 23 and the full veneer on the premolar to transform it also into occlusion this is the amount of uh, material that was used you can see between the lower picture and the upper picture the difference of the ceramic that was used bonding it is a, a step by step by etching the ceramic with fluoridric acid uh, silaning it drying and separating the teeth etching the teeth 
isolating each tooth together uh, on the side with Teflons, not to have any uh, uh, cement interfering. We do not remove all the cements, definitely not the gingiva level, because we will have a bleeding if you just do it. Just remove what is necessary to be able to cement the second, the other side before finalizing both sides, as you can see. Now we are removing the excess on the gingiva, because if we have a bleeding and it will contaminate the site, then we will have a complex situation. For that, now we will go to and uh, remove the cement on the uh, number 21. And you can see how the whole thing was approached. As you can see, the whole uh, cements were done. The margins are supra gingiva. This is the day of the, uh, the cementation. And you can see her sometime later when the tissue integration was done. You cannot believe how relaxed these patients become, how confident in their uh, self-confidence these patients become after so long treatments. They, since they were born until the age of 2022, 20, they won't be able to smile. They will always have a compromised smile. As you can see, much to be done also on her facial appearance, on the nose, or, uh, uh, but these are not our job. What to keep in mind? What to keep in mind at the end of this presentation, I would say, ceramic veneers is an irreversible technique. Once you put a ceramic on the mouth of the patient, it means that it will stay or it has to be redone. Keep the enamel more than 60%. As much as possible, you, can, you have to keep. And the most important part of the enamel that was supposed to be kept is on the cervical area, as much as possible. Bonding to dentine is good, is not very predictable on the long term. Debonding is frequent if the enamel is not sufficient. Marginal aging will happen. It might age because of the composite, it might age because of the stress on the occlusion, and it will crack eventually. The word of caution from Michael Zook. Michael Zook is a guy that was known as the king of uh, veneers. He, was, uh, he wrote books about how to change the, the smile in one day. The problem of the overuse of the veneers by certain cosmetic dentists is reflected in the confessions of a former cosmetic dentist. This is the book that he, uh, he, he wrote, and he suggests the use of the veneers for instance orthodontics or simulated straightening of the teeth is harmful. It is harmful to do some uh, uh, veneers to correct orthodontically, which I call instant orthodontics, especially for younger people with healthy teeth. Minor cos cosmetic or wear is not justification for porcelain and uh, ceramic veneers. Tooth preparation which may destroy 30% of the tooth surface during the tooth preparation of the veneers. After 10 years, 50% of the veneers are gone, need a retreatment, or no longer is, are in satisfactory conditions. This is the situation, the, 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 the teas that I took from Nondas. Nondas is a lab technician, very well known worldwide. He's a Greek uh, lab technician. These are the teas, as you can see on the upper uh, left slide with composite veneers. He changed them into ceramic veneers. Definitely he's the lab technician, but the, his partner, the dentist, as you can see, these were the preparations, the nice preparation, the excellent veneers, ceramic veneer that was done. You can see this, these pictures on his, web, uh, on his Facebook and website. These are the 12 veneers that were done for a very young lady that became Miss Universe. Miss Universe was 18 years old when she had all this treatment. My question is, would you do it to your, lay, uh, to your daughter if it is to give her the smile? Look at this Miss America having a removable denture to replace a missing tooth, waiting for the end of the growth, and yet she was elected 
Miss America. Nobody knew, nobody noticed, as you can see. Even a temporary or nicely prepared uh, uh, work should not compromise the situation of the teeth. Thank you very much for your attention. I leave you with these reflections.